Hello. Hi, Gary. This is Gary speaking. This is Jason Curtis speaking from Cape Town, South Africa. How are you? Hey, Jason. How you doing? Not nice to see you, man. Yes, I've been. How are you doing? Uh, fine, thanks. Beforehand, I, was, um, I, I did a, a drum clinic last night in, in Croydon, um, in kind of South London. Right. With, um, with um, the, guy, um, the drummer from Pink and, and a few other drummers and stuff. And we went out drinking afterwards, and the next thing I knew, I was, well, the next thing I knew I didn't know. I was, <laughs> So drunk, not a clue. Got home today about three o'clock this afternoon. Well, Ouch. Okay. <laughs> How's your head? Um, it was killing me this morning. I thought I was going to die. Oh, uh, so but, um, you just don't learn, do you? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. No, 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 as long as you had a good so, time. Exactly. Going out tonight as well, so we'll just take it from there. Here we go. And just more punishment. Take care, of, care of the dog. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like, but, uh, exactly. But, but thank you for taking the time, because... Uh, yeah, no trouble at all, cool. I was supposed to speak to you originally in early December. And yeah. um, actually, at the, literally at the time that the interview was supposed to happen, unfortunately, one of my colleagues uh, was killed in a motorcycle accident. So, oh, Jesus, I'm sorry about that. No, uh, thank you. But, um, yeah, so it was, a bit, uh, it was a bit of a weird time, but... Um, yeah. So it's been it's been an interesting. Well, I, had I spoken to you in December, I would have said it, uh, it had been an interesting year um, for the Libertines. Yes, well, last year was a very very interesting year for us. Very interesting year. Had um, a lot of lots of ups and downs. I think mm -hmm. there's many ups and downs around, possibly. Mm -hmm. For me, the um, the ups, the positives, they came out of it were much more. Um, well, much more to be remembered and much more to much more to be adhered to than mm. than the negatives. You know, mm. just, uh, when once we actually you know completed the, the record, which was under a lot of adversity as well. Yes. And then started touring without Peter. You know, it was initially quite difficult. But once we actually got into the swing of things, it was you know it was actually the best tour we've ever done. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Because I mean, if you think so about from the time that the band started, I mean, all uh, I mean, the UK press is notorious for, you know, for, for hyping bands, and I mean, you were yeah. one of those bands yeah. that enjoyed that, but to be able to carry it, um, you know, was, was even a, a bigger challenge, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It was, very, well, it was, um, because we've always had this thing about, like, um, well, especially when, when Peter's there, um, it was always this thing about us being, um, um, uh, backs against the wall, it was us guys against everybody else, basically, yeah. because, they, you know, everybody had this kind of, um, Opinion of us that we were um, a particular type of band, very, very slovenly, very kind of drug orientated and so forth. Never knew what you were going to expect. And, you know, the last thing that most people were actually thinking with respect to us, you know, was, you know, about the quality of the music. Yes. And, you know, and that we were really into, you know, whatever that we were actually performing at that point in time. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, it just gave us the opportunity to actually go back to that and say, look, we're not all, we're not like, we're not. You know, we're just not, we're not as mad as people actually make it out to be sure we like to have a good time and sure. go around and maybe spend a few days out on the bench. But that's you know, but that's you know, that's that's nothing to do with the music, that's just us doing what we like to do. Mm. Kind of what we've always done. Mm. Yeah, but that never gets in the way of us actually performing the music. Mm. Um, which is, you know, the most important thing for us. Well I think the problem too is that you you know, the thing is that being you know, A being in the public eye but the the media <clears throat> being you know who we are unfortunately um yeah. we'll, we'll take something and uh and make it bigger you know we'll, we'll create a perception that it's larger than it is and and that goes yeah. for the good and the bad and uh, a lot yeah. of the time you know they're completely you know they're completely <laughs> off 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 track but it yeah. leaves that perception that you know all, yeah. all hell is, is 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 because it makes for you know for good reading it, it has which can can hurt you as much as it you know in the early days it helped you no, I completely agree with you. I completely agree with you. But um, hey, it is what it is. Mm. And um, luckily for us, we've made a bed, and we're quite happy with it. You know? mm, 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 mm. We're happy with what we've ended up with. It's just, you know, it's just one of those things. Obviously, things could be better. You know? Sure. You know, there could be a lot more. Um, it could be a. We could be in a, in a scenario where things were just a lot more plain sailing orientated. But you know, that, that'd be kind of boring. Mm. <laughs> True. But I mean, it must be it must be quite interesting as well. I mean, obviously, you know, there's a point that you switch off and you don't read your press and, and you don't, you know, you oh, don't buy into the... I don't read the... any of it anymore. No. <laughs> Especially the English press, really not interested in any of it. Which is sad, you know, in a way, because you'd yeah, want to. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's this thing about the Chavs at the moment. Um, Carl and Tim Burgess and, and Andy Burroughs mm. um, from Ray the Line, and they're supposedly setting up another band and stuff, and the, and the press are really going crazy about it. Yeah. It's just not going to happen. No. Just friends that happened to be in a pub who decided to play one night, and, and now the press have actually ran away 
away with that. And, and, and you know, Carl's not going to be doing anything because he's in high, he's in high school. Well, he's going into hospital soon to have an operation, have a, tumor, a benign tumor removed. Yes. Um, and so he's going to be out for three months. Mm. And we've already said that we're going to, at some stage, go back into the studio and start goofing around with some stuff. Yes. Um, and you know, we're going to more than likely do that with Anthony, okay. um, who's been boring with us. Um, and, and, and you know, John's doing his Yeti thing as well. He's, um, mm. he's, he's, you know, he's got his own band. He's going on tour with Yeti real soon. So he'll be doing that as well. Mm. But, you know, it's just, you know, we're still going to be doing our thing. You know? Sure. It's just give, giving everybody the opportunity to, you know, get, either get a bit of space and get a bit of perspective. Mm. And, um, and relax and do, what, put it, do whatever they want to do for a while. Sure, sure. Way, really. So, yeah. I mean... Whatever we want. Sure, but I mean, to all intents and purposes, I mean, with, you know, with Pete and uh, Baby Shambles and all of that happening now, I mean, to all intents and purposes, Pete, Pete is, is, is out of the picture, because I'm just trying to understand entirely, you know, how, how it all pieces together without him. No, none of us do really, to be honest. None of us have really got a clue. Um, <coughs> Pete, I mean, has already said it himself that, you know, he's, you know, he's, you know, he's one of the fan members of the Libertines, no matter actually what goes on. Yeah. Know. He, he, he believes within himself that he will always be with Pete. And we've always, we've always categorically said that, you know, this is all that we're really doing right now is giving Peter the space to actually sort himself out. Sure. Um, he knows that, and we think, well, he knows especially that you know, the things that he's doing right now, it's not kind of in our, in our plan. Mm. And it's not, and we, um, we or he knows that we believe it's not in his best interest to be treating himself and treating other people like that. Sure. So we've just said, look, I'm really, really sorry, but you've got to do your own thing. Mm. Once you sort of yourself out, you can't come back. Mm. But now we're, you know, Peter's in a position whereby if he does decide to come back, you know, that window is always actually open for him. Mm. Um, but you know, it has to be under the right um, under the right circumstances. Mm. You know, we can't treat his new band, Baby Shambles, like crap. No. And then just come back to us, guys. You know, we just won't allow that. No. Um, you know, it has to. You know, he's got he's got to change a lot of things about him. He's hurt a lot of people. He's hurt us as well. Mm. Um, you know, he, you know, and he's got to apologize and pay his dues. So. Done right. So, because you you're essentially keeping it alive. Yeah, and if if he does do that, then yeah, sure, he keep, you know he wants to come back. Yeah, fine. If he wants to. Mm. Fine. Mm. I mean, it's, it's just, I just have it. It, it makes it difficult, doesn't it? Because the thing is, every band member commits to something 100%, yeah. and all of yeah. you have done that, and then this happens, and you know, it's. It, it, it must be, you know, I mean, all respect to you because you're at that stage where six months from now nobody could care, but at the moment everybody cares and everybody wants yeah. it to happen. So yeah. you've you've got to respect that window. Yeah, exactly. No, I completely agree with you. Um, let's just hope that six months from now, six months from now nobody cares about the situation as opposed mm. to nobody cares about us. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, you know, hopefully we'll, you know, we'll. We'll stay true to our word and, and get things going again yes. at some stage. But right now, it's just a case of we need to just, just mm. sit back mm. and really kind of go over what's actually happened to us over the past year or so. Sure. Yeah. It, well, it's even more than a year because you know Peter did it to us mm. the previous year as well mm. when he when he when he when he went on his first um, drug trip. Mm. Um, you know, so you know there's been a, a lot actually happened to us over a very very short period of time, and it's only quite recently that we've really really been able to come to terms with it and terms with it and really be able to you know just get on and, and do things as we should do mm. I mean it's difficult as well because there's there's so much more at stake now than there was a year ago yeah mm. yeah no I completely agree with you mm. And I mean, it's to say from that point of view, as you say, I mean, when when the band was a struggling band, and 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 you know, before anybody really cared, um, you know, it, it, to the point that now everybody cares and everyone wants a piece of you. Um, yeah. You know, who do you blame? Do you, you know, do you blame the fact that that you became so you know so hu so huge and so popular? You know, ha would it have happened anyway? Um, I'm not quite. Sure. I think we can definitely apply to. Some of what actually happened to us was the fact that it did happen very, very quickly over a very, very short period of time, mm. and we didn't actually have. Um, we, I know we didn't really have the right, the right people around us for a period of time to mm. really help us out when mm. things were going really were quite difficult. Our manager at that point in time, mm. um, a mad, a, a, a mad Persian woman called Bandy Pucci, mm. she had a weird relationship with Peter, mm. where, and Peter really kind of liked her. She had a feeling for Peter, so, but it was very kind of. 
it was very fraught, very, very tense between them all at the time because they didn't know how to actually figure out exactly what they wanted to do. Mm. And that this weird relationship that actually had between them. Mm. And then we have, you know, the, the trouble with our management company who really didn't have the back, well, not our management company, our record company, mm. who really didn't have the backbone in order to say some of the things that are actually happening on tour, you can't do that. Yeah, like, yeah. Um, we're, we're managed by um, Alan McGee and Chris. Yeah. And, on the, and on, on the American tour, we were goofing around as much as we do normally. Mm. And I was, I, I spent like three days of the American tour just on an absolute alcoholical binge, mm. not knowing what was going on. And then I got a call from the management company from Stephen King, Alan, Alan McGee's partner. And he asked me how I was doing. I said, fine. And he just said, do me a favor, you need to slow down or else you're going to get in trouble. Mm. And as soon as he said that, that was it. I was like, yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, if, yeah. if you think I should slow down, then I should do. It was in the early days. We didn't have anybody doing that. Yes. TVs are getting thrown out of the window, bills are getting sent to people, and nobody would say, don't do it. Mm. Nobody would say it, because they were too scared of to actually appro approach the subject. And in a way, too, you sort of want to hit yourselves, because, I mean, you, you've read about it a thousand times. I mean, you, yeah. you, you know, I mean, growing up, I mean, you've read all the stories, you, you know the lifestyles and, and the way that, you know, careers have been destroyed by that kind of thing. And, yeah, exactly. You know, and, you know it's not... It, it's, it's not it's not cool and it's not clever, let's face it. The whole rock and roll theory is dead anyway. They, they, they died, God knows, years ago. Mm. Um, because you don't need to be in a rock and roll band to throw a TV out of the window. No. You don't need to be in a rock and roll band to do loads and loads of dro drugs and get laid by loads and loads of tricks. I mean, mm. that's part of common day life now, unfortunately. Yeah. You go to university, look at, look at a, lot of, a lot of kids in university. Mm. All they're doing is going to school, obviously. Um, well, it's what it's just perfect. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to get a shag, um, yeah. A lot yeah, going going to lots and lots of gigs, shagging, mm. going to clubs, getting lots and lots of like drugs. Mm. You, know, you can't actually do that at school. Yeah, that is part of the rock and roll lifestyle. So you don't actually need to be in a band in order to do that anyway. Sure. And then you all you need to do is look at the lifestyles of like Jim Morrison or, or Ted Baker. Exactly. Who, you know, both of those artists died alone. Mm. Nobody wanted to know of them. Penniless, mm. overweight, um, with a drug dependency problem. Mm. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, you've got to like say to yourself, well, you know, you kind of do to yourself. Nobody, nobody fought it. Exactly, and you don't want to do that. I mean, the thing is, if you think the reason why you started the band was that you would a wanted to entertain people and hopefully earn enough money to to be able to carry on doing it for as long as you possibly could. You know. Yeah, for me, it's all about the music. Yeah. No matter everything, you know, a lot of people actually use that terminology, all about the music, but it is literally about the performance, the, the joy of actually playing music, mm. and especially the joy of playing music with your friends. Yeah, and which is which is really the crux of the problem that we have right now because mm. we were friends, all four of us, me, Pete, Carl, and John, we were friends before we even began playing. Yeah, and now that friendship has been placed, you know, in, in some form of jeopardy mm. because of music and, yeah. and and the lifestyle that like, that it kind of encompasses, which is which is kind of weird when you think about it. Because yeah. at the end of the day, this is pretty much the easiest thing in the world to really do. Mm. Um, you know, whether you're actually earning a living doing it or not, mm. you know, going into a studio with your friends. Um, rehearsing music, playing music, taking it out on the road, or going to like your local venue and playing it there, mm. and just having a good time doing it. You can't get, you can't get much easier. Exactly. But then, I mean, everything that you just said, I mean, is is basically everything that really, yeah, you know, that you've been fighting to try and attain. It was like it was almost like the yeah. last thing on the list because yeah. you had all this other stuff to have to deal with, you know. And well, to be honest, you know, it's not something that we, that the rest of us, have actually been trying to attain. I mean, it's just that's just natural life for us. Yes. We 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 still approach shows now as we always have. Done, which is great. You know. Which is, you know, we'll, we'll turn up at the venue, we'll do our sound check, and then, you know, you know, you know, you go to, a, you, how many shows have you been to where you actually don't actually see the band yes. until they get on stage, and then when you, as soon as they get, as soon as they get off stage, you won't see them again. Yes. I mean, we, we'll do our sound check, we'll, you know, we'll do whatever press that we need to do, we'll go stand within the audience checking that band, we'll hang out with, like, with, like, people and stuff, mm. and it's not because we're, like, like, um, trying to, trying to prove something. It's no, because you choose to, choose to be there. We are. Mm. Yeah, it's just, it's just the way that we are. I don't actually see myself as being, and I know the rest of the guys, we don't actually see ourselves being particularly any different to anybody else. No. Like, well, ultimately, you're not, are you? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's the same thing. Why shouldn't we be allowed to go check out the band from the start and then start talking to somebody saying, oh, this band's really, really cool. Oh, yeah, nice meeting. What's your name? Mm -hmm. it, it is no big deal at the end of the day. Mm. But then saying that, 2005, what's, what, what is in store for the Libertines? 2005, what's in store for us, guys? Well, um, as mentioned, as pre-mentioned, Carl's going to have his operation yep. if he um, sticks to the schedule. I know he's a little bit worried about that. But yeah, I'm it's sure. It's only been nine tumor, so it's just a case of getting that done as soon as possible. Yeah, but no, uh, yeah. He'll, he'll, um, he will um, have um, three months of recuperation time, so, mm. which we won't be doing anything. Mm. I think we're going to 
going to, I think the management company are possibly thinking about releasing two more singles. Um, I think one of them is going to be um, possibly less close to the Bugle, but I'm not quite sure. Mm, you know, last choice if they do. Yeah, we'll do a little bit of promotion around that. And then I think there's a tour. I think they've start, possibly started setting up the end festival dates for the summer. Of course, and yeah. I think that'll more than likely be the first thing that we'll actually start doing. Okay. Um, and then once we get into the festival season, I think that's when we're going to more than likely start the, um, the process of recording. Album three. Um, and, well, possibly just a, just just a couple of singles first, just to okay. see where we are. Yes, yes, just, yes. Just, just to see where we are. And we don't want to we don't want to rush in rushing too no. hardly about anything. No, there's so no rush. Be just um, re- um, maybe release a couple of singles, um, and then and then kind of take it from there. Mm. But we're definitely you know wanting to even not not that we actually think we think that we're particularly big in anybody's mind, but we definitely want to take things a step back. Mm. And, and more than likely try our best to get back to you know the original reason why we actually began to play music which was you know just for the music exactly which we which we really managed to do with the last section of, of the tour mm. the last section of the American tour and, and the Japanese tour and that mm. literally would just became really really good fun mm. and also just respect the space I'm sure as well huh? yeah mm. yeah yeah and mm. it was you know it, 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 it was more it was more like a, a meeting of minds for us um, throughout the rest of those, for, throughout the um, majority of, of, of the tour, mm. because um, you know we'd goof around on stage and then you know we'd, you know before shows we'd like sit down on stage and talk with people in the audience and stuff, and, mm. and then we'd, then we take them out drinking or then we used to go bowling a lot. <laughs> Everybody was hanging out like afterwards. We take them bowling with us as well. <laughs> and it, just, it, was, it was it was it was literally really really good fun. Mm. And it was like the least rock and roll thing you could possibly do. <laughs> True. But, but you know, it's just something that not just the band did. We took the crew out as well. The crew went bowling. We all went bowling. We had, had a little after league after shows and stuff. We'd finish shows like because the, Jap- the Japanese shows would finish quite early, mm. so we'd be pretty much ready to go by like eight thirty. Okay. Once the crew came into the dressing room, once one person would always just say, "Tonight we roll." <laughs> and go bowling, and if anybody was hanging out, we'd just ask him, "Do you want to come bowling? Come bowling!" Brilliant. And we drank him along with us. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, I mean, as I say, you've been through, you know, more than most uh, most bands go through their entire career in the space of, you say, two years. So, yeah. um, I think from here on in, uh, it, it can only get easier, surely. Hopefully, yeah. If it, if it doesn't beca- if it doesn't get easier, it'll just become more manageable. Yes. Yeah. You know, we've we've got experience behind us now, and it's just something that we can we can more than likely deal with. Sure. Um, on a on a much on a much easier basis. And the music sounding absolutely great. So, as I say, don't don't ever yeah, question we're, that. We're playing better now than we ever have been. That shambolic tag that we used to have beforehand. Yeah. Let's get rid of that one. <laughs> the band that can play as as good as anybody without putting anyone else down. That's so fantastic. We, you know, we we can we can we, we play great. And we have a good time doing it. Exactly, and that's, as I say, as long as that's happening, then, uh, then yeah. you keep doing it, yeah. Exactly. Well, Gary, thank you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate it. No to whatsoever. It's a pleasure talking to you. What's the weather like in South Africa now in um, Cape Town? Cape Town, it's hot as hell. It's the middle of oh, summer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a balmy sort of 32, you know. <laughs> not a cloud in the sky. Oh, God. <laughs> it's not outside here, and it's freezing. Well, it's not freezing, but it's, it's not particularly great. I've got a cold coming out. No, same. Well, reasons. Really great. I think it's re- reason yeah. enough to, to, to get uh, to get you guys down here and, and uh, catch some sun, even if it's just to shoot a video. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Mm. That, mm. that, that, that sounds like a great idea. Yeah, that's. Hit the beach. Yeah. There, there, there are worse things you could do. Chuck, chuck a couple of shrimps in the barbie. Even though it's an could do that. Thing, but I'm sure we could chuck a couple of shrimps in the barbie. Oh, for sure. I mean, I mean, I mean, we've got a couple of bowling alleys too, so you're fine. You do? <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> So in that case, get us out there, make sure you're, you're around, and then we will go bowling. I'll hold you to that. That's a good laugh. Absolutely. Okay, thank you, and have a superb weekend. Not so you take it easy, have a good weekend. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.